Hello everyone, welcome to week three of the Something Small prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. Now we're doing something a little bit different this month, as in we're doing a different challenge each week. So week one was doing something small using tea bags. Week two was artist trading cards or artist trading coins. And as you can see here, week three is doing something with puzzle pieces. So I've got an array of different types of puzzles here to give you some ideas as to how you can interpret this prompt i've got one of these wooden um, building block jenga pieces here i've got a domino piece a scrabble piece um, a couple of playing cards this is a vintage playing card this one here is just um, a playing card out of one of the tim holtz ephemera packs a bingo card again out of one of the tim holtz um, ephemera packs and a giant puzzle piece as well do not forget that you can print things off the internet as well don't forget to check newspapers and magazines for crosswords and word searches you can interpret this prompt in any way you like and there are just so many different options i've decided i'm going to alter a puzzle piece a jigsaw puzzle piece today this is um, from a giant puzzle piece that i've picked up on clearance um, in tk maxx i think it was i got a whole box of these a couple of years ago puzzles tend to have a shiny surface so i'm just going to sand this down just to rough it up because i want to apply some scrapbooking paper to cover up the elephant image so i'm just sanding this off just using a piece of sandpaper there we go and then i shall use a baby wipe then just to get rid of any of the dust I've sanded and of course this will just help any glue that i use to glue pieces down to stick to the piece of jigsaw puzzle um, which would otherwise have peeled off because of the shiny surface now i'm going to use this piece of scrapbooking paper here and i know that you will ask this has come from a pack called mamba sheets this was something that i picked up from tk maxx and this has got to be at least three or four years old so highly unlikely as to whether you'd get it and um, the company is me and my big ideas um, live creatively me and my big ideas mambi sheets have a look if you're interested in this there are some gorgeous sheets in this pack um, and I've hoarded it because it is just so utterly beautiful. Does anybody else do that, that something is too nice and then you just can't bring yourself to use it? Just look at these gorgeous birds. They're just absolutely beautiful. So I am trying, whilst I'm in my collage mode, to bring out some of the packs that I have been hoarding onto for such a very, very long time. But I want to use this particular part here of the scrapbooking paper. So what I am going to do is apply some glue I'm going to start off by using a glue stick. Here we go. Um, I'll apply the glue to the jigsaw puzzle piece here, like, like so. And then I shall apply some three in one as well, just to help it stick down um, even better. So we'll apply some three in one as well. The glue stick just helps me to maneuver things um, around. So there we go, um, just applying the three in one primarily around the edges like this, just so that it doesn't come unstuck. I'm also going to use my finger just to spread that um, around as well, just so that it gets close to the um, edges like this and I don't end up with any lumps and bumps. Let me grab a tissue and then I'm just going to stick this down to my piece of paper. So I want that to go there, about there like that. So turn my piece of paper over and if my memory serves me correctly, it was about about there. That's perfect. And I'm just going to press this down. Uh, maybe I can use, whoops, Daisy, I've just bumped the camera. Maybe I can just use a bone folder just to press down like this. And I shall leave that for a minute or two for the glue to grab. Um, and then I can trim it um, using my scissors. Um, you can see that I've got some awkward bits and pieces, um, curves and things that will be a bit tricky to get into. I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. My puzzle piece has been stuck down for a couple of minutes. I am just going to cut right around the edge like this just to make this piece of paper easier for me to deal with like that move the rest of it out of the way and then I'm just going to cut around the areas that are easy for me to access getting as close to the puzzle piece as I can. I can use a nail file, which you've seen me use before, just to get rid of um, any awkward bits. Just get into what you can and the rest of it don't worry about. 
this is where scissors of different um, sizes come in handy as well to help you get into awkward elements. Now I've got quite a bit of overhang. What I'm going to do is get in here with my nail file and just file away any excess um, and just smooth things off around the edges. But you can see that it's just coming um, straight off. So I'm going to do this over my bin and as soon as I've done that, I'll be straight back. My puzzle piece is sanded down. It doesn't take very long at all. Um, just really quick and easy to do, but it makes such a big difference and this feels really nice and smooth. Now, before I do anything else to my puzzle piece, what I want to do is use a black Sharpie marker just to disguise the outside and I am going to do this off camera because I have a tendency to slipping and making a muck of things and I don't want to do that so but this is all I'm doing just going around the edge just to outline my edges. I think around the edges using my sharpie marker but you can see that some has overlapped on the edge of my jigsaw puzzle and if I can get the lid off my stamp pad I'm now going to use some archival ink any black ink pad will work just to go around the edges to frame it and then you won't even be able to see um, that things have overlapped or bled slightly and it just frames it and just adds a really nice border I like how this looks I've also sanded on the back as well because I will paint this with some black paint or gesso once my piece is finished and it's just easier to do it whilst everything is is flat and before I start applying any further embellishments I just love how that looks. Now, if I hold it like this, I don't know whether you can see that the paper that I've used has got lots of sparkly dimension. It's just beautiful, but I do want to add some more. Now, I've got my Nouveau Drops. These are the Crystal Nouveau Drops, and this is white. And what I'm going to do is just um, make sure that um, I've got rid of any air bubbles, and I'm just going to apply some dots around my piece like this just to give it a bit of dimension and just to highlight these circles um, just to add a bit more interest to the background piece I'm not pressing very hard and I'm going to have to set this aside to dry as well um, the peaks will um, soften up so we should end up with some really nice rounded um, little blobs I love this stuff really easy to use and I'm going to do this to all of these outer circles. So I've just gone around the edges of all of these circles like this and this has just given the jigsaw puzzle piece a bit more dimension and just made it look a whole lot more interesting and of course the white just makes it stand out as well. Really like how that looks and it draws attention to the glitter um, that's in the centre of these circles as well. So of course I need to pop that to one side to dry. That's going to take I don't know 45 minutes maybe an hour or so before it's hard enough for me to use. Now the Nouveau drops on my background are dry and so I'm ready to add my focal image. I'm going to use the bird that was on the background paper. So this is the background paper I used and this was the bird. Uh, you get two sheets of this in that particular scrapbooking pack and I fussy cut the bird out. I did glue it down to a piece of cardstock first just to uh, thicken it slightly because of course I've got lots of texture going on in the background here with all of the Nouveau drops. Um, so that's um, been attached to a piece of cardstock and then I fussy cut around it and I know that some of you are probably thinking well why didn't I just attach this part here to the jigsaw puzzle piece and it's because I didn't want the washi tape design and I didn't want this filigree design either I also wanted um, this gradient effect um, from the paper on this side so you know I decided to cut uh, fussy cut the bird out instead now I don't know whether any of you can remember I made a jigsaw puzzle piece altered jigsaw puzzle piece a couple of years ago using some of the art by Marlene die cut blocks um, I love this this is one of the favorite things that I've ever made this is just an acrylic heart that I had from a reed diffuser um, and I stole one of Linda's ideas as well and made this hanger here I just love that and I love the crown that the flamingo is wearing here so that is the die cut block that the flamingo came from these are um art by my lean's original die cut block books um and i think these are discontinued now she has brought out some new ones um which are all in the same kind of style you get loads of things to use in these books they're absolutely fantastic and i'll leave the links to where you can get these from in the description box below now there is um a crown um in this die cut book but it's 
just too big. Um, that is not going to work for the bird. It's it's just huge. Um, but I've also got one of um, Art by Marlene's other die cut books. I think that was um, this one here is number one, and I think this one here is number two. Um, and there's a few crowns on this page here, and I think this one here is going to be perfect. We've got that one, and we've also got this one here as well. I think that one's just a bit too small. Um, I like that one there, so I think I'm going to remove that um, from the page. These just um, snap out like this. Um, now I don't want the white border so I'm just going to fussy cut um, around it and as soon as I've done that I'll be straight back. Now I glued my crown onto another piece of cardstock and fussy cut it out. Um, I just wanted it on cardstock just to give it a bit more weight again the same as the bird and what I want to do is just go over it with the Wink of Stella pen in gold just to add a bit of glitter just like the jigsaw puzzle piece that um, I did before. So I'm just going to go over the whole of this, like so. Going over the white as well. This dries really quickly. And then I think once I've glued everything down, I might add some dimensional glue to this as well, but this should add um, a really nice sparkle to this crown. Um, I also want to um, add some um, Nouveau drops to the tip of the crown as well. Can you see that sparkle if I tilt it? Let me just stand up. Isn't that just beautiful? Um, and of course, the crown here. I think I use glitter pen for that, but of course, glitter just takes ages to, um, to dry. So I'm just going to give this a quick zap with the heat tool. And I'm going to glue this down with some um, three in one. In fact, I might add some um, of my glue stick first just so that I've got um, a bit of wiggle room to manoeuvre it into the right place. So we'll apply some glue stick to start off with and then some um, three in one. Just move this over so that you can see what what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, glue the bird down first and then pop the crown on top afterwards. Let's just add some three in one as well. So making sure I've got plenty around the edges like like this. And then I'm just going to smooth that out with my finger just to make sure um, that it's covered all over. Like this, we can move, move that out of the way. Oh, I've got glue everywhere. Um, I want it that way up. And let me just get rid of the excess glue from around his feet and then I think I want that about there and so I'm just going to weight that down for a minute or two underneath a heavy book in fact I think I'll add the crown um, first let me just try and get that to grab to start off with there we go um, bring back the piece of deli paper Let's add some glue, glue to that. And again, three in one. Add some to the tip of the crown as well. And again, I'm just going to smooth that out with my finger. There we are. And pop that into place there like like so and i'm just going to use um a tissue here just to get rid of any of the stringy bits of glue that i don't want i can also use um, a toothpick here we go just to get into those awkward bits where the glue has um, just spilled out and i'm just going to weight that down underneath um, a heavy book for that glue to grab i love that isn't that cute um, and then i want to add some kind of a, a dangle to keep it in keeping with this one here the bird and the crown are glued down now and before i do anything else um, to this piece i just want to apply some black gesso to the back just to tidy it up black gesso um, is really matte and dries incredibly quickly as well so this might take two coats but i'm just going to go all over the back like like this and just give this a quick zap with the heat tool 
The gesso is dry, so that's neatened up the back um, of the jigsaw piece. And I've made myself a hanger as well, which I'm just going to glue on like this. Now, these are incredibly easy to make. You need some kind of mandrel. So I've just used um, a paintbrush here. You want something sort of quite, um, quite wide. Um, so that's made me um, a circle there. And then I'm just using some pliers then just to bend that out like that straighten this up a bit and then with your round nose pliers what you want to do is just make a spiral and this just gives you something then to um, attach to the back of your puzzle piece you then want another pair of pliers and you just need to wrap like this this is the trickiest part but it doesn't take long once you get going it's um it's much easier so i'm just pulling it um into that little nook there then if you want to add beads like I have, now's the time to do it. So you would thread your beads on. I've just used some um, silver coloured seed beads. Once that's finished, you will just go over to the other side and you'll just pinch it out um, again. Just then make sure that that's nice and straight and then repeat the same thing. You're just going to make another spiral with your round nose pliers. So just get it in there like that and then use another pair of pliers then just to spiral that all the way back in. And of course, that gives you something to attach the glue to so that you can pop it onto the back of your hanger, which I'll show you in a second. Now, there's one other little tip that um, I want to give you. So that's how I made that. So you can either have it plain or with beads on. Now, if you are using beads like I've done here, you don't want it um, too snug to your spiral um, because obviously you want um, you want that to come down a bit so that the spiral doesn't show on the other side of the jigsaw puzzle piece. So I am going to use some of my diamond glaze because I know that this will stick really well. So let's just um, pop the lid off there. Let me just work on a piece of deli paper. I'm Now, which way round does it need to go? It's that way round. So I am going to apply my glue just to this area here of the metal. There we go, just a bit, bit there. You don't need much because I don't want it spilling out all over the place. And then you just need to centralise it. And this is the fiddliest part. There we go. So about there like that. Of course, this is even harder to do on camera. And I just need to make sure that I've got that centralised. And then I'm going to use a couple of clips here just to hold that in place until the glue is, is set. So one on that side and one on that side. And whilst the glue's still wet, I'm just going to grab a baby wipe just to wipe off the excess. Keep those clips on now until the glue is dry. Um, I also want to add a dangle. I've got a key, um, which I really like. This is just um, a silver key with um, a clear um, jewel. I've also got a feather and I don't know why the key is calling to me. So that's the one I'm going to use. So I've got my crocodile here and I'm going to use the small hole just to add a hole at the bottom here, not too close, um, not too far away from the edge because I want to be able to get um, a jump ring through here. So about there, like that, there we go. And then I've got um, a jump ring here. This is um, a seven millimeter jump ring. I'm just going to open that out. Um, in fact, what I'll do first, let me just grab myself a Sharpie marker. I'm just going to add some black in there just to outline outline that hole that looks better there we go pop my jump ring through attach my key make sure I get that facing the right way and then I'm just going to use my pliers then just to close that up what have I done with them they were there a second ago oh here they are so I'm just going to use my pliers now just to close that jump ring. There we go. Let's see if I've managed to get this the right way round. I just love how that looks. Isn't that just gorgeous? Now, what I want to do next is add some of these little beads 
to the top of the crown here. Um, I just need to wait for this to dry so that I can take the clips off and then we'll sort that out and then I can just set that aside then for these beads to dry. I'm going to work on a tray to do this because otherwise I'm just going to end up with beads absolutely everywhere. I'm using my diamond glaze. Any type of glue like glossy accents or dimensional glue will work for this and I'm just going to a a attach a blob of glue. There we go to the tip of the crown like this and then I'm just going to tip some of these micro beads on and then they'll attach then to the to the glue that I've popped down see they're going to go absolutely everywhere so we'll pop those on like that and then I can just tap them tap them off and they should just stick to where I've got the glue you can see here I'm just using a pin then just to get rid of the beads that are accumulating where I don't want them. Of course, I can get right into the corners by doing this. There we go. And then we've got rid of all of those. And then I'm just going to have to set this to one side now for that glue um, to dry and for those beads to attach properly so that they don't all come falling falling off. I just love how that looks. Isn't that cute? Well, because I worked on a tray, I was just able to pour all of the um, remaining micro beads that I didn't use um, back into the tub. And now this is dry enough. It's not set completely, but it's dry enough for me to just add some dimensional glue to the crown. So I'm just going to do this and then I'm just going to have to set this off to one side for it to dry. Oh, hang on. It seems to have uh, stuck at the tip. There we go. Let's just um, sort that out. Here we go. And then I can just apply some dimensional glue to the crown like, like this. As I say, this is diamond glaze, but uh, glossy accents would do much the same, the same thing. And this will set clear once it's dry. I just love how that looks. Picking out the Art by Mylene books has given me another idea. And I want to do a very quick altered playing card. Um, now, I think that playing cards on their own are just a bit too flimsy. So I'm going to glue three together. I'm going to glue these three here, just using some three in one. So let's just put some um, around the edge like this. And this will just make my altered playing card more stable. So we'll apply some um, in the middle as well. Again, I'm just going to use my finger just to drag that to the edge. Here we go. Just to make sure that, um, you know, it's stuck down at the edges properly. And then I'm going to place that on top like so. And then I shall um, weight that down underneath a heavy book to make sure that that sticks. Um, I will eventually glue this one on top um, as well, but um, not just yet. So we've got the back of the playing card, um, which I like to see, and I like to see the front as well. Now I've dug out um, a napkin. Um, this one here, which I think is really pretty, and I'm going to um, cut myself a quarter. Let's just um, cut a quarter of this napkin off and then I need to take the plies apart. So let me just cut this here just to make it um, easier to work with. Um, and of course, napkins are usually two or three plies. I think this one's three. So that's the first layer. I'll save that because um, I can use that for something else. And then let's have a look. We'll take the final layer off like this. And because napkins are so sheer, if I glue this down, um, I want that big flower there like that. I think that's really pretty. I'll be able to see um, the playing card underneath. So I'm just going to sand this to start off with because, of course, playing cards are really shiny and I do want a surface um, that my glue is going to stick to. So let me just find some cut and dry. I'm just going to give this um, a very quick sand just to rough it up a little bit. And then I'm just using a baby wipe here just to get rid of the um, dust like so. Bring back a piece of deli paper and I'm just going to use my glue stick if I can find it. Here we go. Let's move that out of the um, way. So just apply my glue stick, focusing on the edges as usual. I'm not going to apply any three in one to this, just the glue stick. And that will be enough to hold my napkin in place. There we go. So that's that. 
take that off the, the deli paper. Everything's sliding around all over the place here. Let me just pop that, um, that there, get rid of any globby bits. And then I'm just going to place my napkin down um, on top like so. And I'm just going to very, very carefully then just smooth that down. Now you can um, use cling film. I haven't got any um, to hand. So I'm just, in fact, we can use this. This is just um, a glue spreader. So I'm just going to use that just to smooth my napkin out. Um, it's best to start from the centre and work your way out. And as soon as that's dry, um, I'm just going to trim around the edges. That's the napkin glued down to my playing card and you can still see the playing card details underneath um, but I do want to seal this with um, some watered down Mod Podge. This is three parts Mod Podge, um, one part water and so I'm just going to apply a layer over the top which will just seal that napkin um, and also probably make it a bit more translucent um, as well. In fact, there you go, you can see the details of the playing card coming through um, even better now. And then I shall just give this a quick zap with my heat tool and work on my focal image. My napkin's dry and so I'm just going to glue it down to the other two cards now. So again, I'll just apply some of the three in one all the way over including the centre and again I'm just going to smooth that out with my finger just to make sure that the card sticks right to the very edge. Smooth it out in the middle as well and then I can just stick that down on top and then I'm just going to weight that down underneath a heavy book whilst I work on the focal image. I'm going to use another one of these Art by Marlene um, die cuts. Now I've chosen this one here um, you get two of each in the pack. Let me bring my camera down so that you can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do to start off with, um, let me just get the um, Nouveau drops working again. I'm going to use some of the white Nouveau drops again and I'm just going to add some blobs to her necklace just to make that stand out a little bit more. So we'll start off by doing that um, and this adds dimension and just brightens everything up a little bit um, as well. So I'm doing that here like this, pressing really lightly on these Nouveau drops. I love these, they're so versatile and easy to use. Um, and then I'm going to add a bead over the stripes of her t-shirt or dress or whatever it is here as well, just to make that stand out and give that some dimension as well. So I'll do that to each of these uh, stripes you've got something similar and you want to add similar details you could use gouache or even a white Posca pen. Now I just want to add some pink drops as well. Whoops let me just um, get some of the excess off. I want to add some pink to her crown there like this. This has been drying for about 20 minutes or so and so the pink fuchsia dots that I've applied to the top um, are starting to firm up and so I'm just going to use some gold stickles now just to apply some glitter to the crown. So I'm just going to have to set that aside then to dry and that might take several several hours but that's okay um, because I just absolutely love the way that this um, looks. It adds so much interest and dimension to the piece. The glue will probably um, flatten out as well, but we'll be left with that lovely sparkly crown. So let me just try not to get my fingers in it. So that's what I've got um, so far. So I'm just going to set that to one side for everything to set. The background of my playing card is now dry um, and I've weighted these down underneath the heavy book. What I do want to do is just go around the edge with, um, first of all, a Sharpie marker. And then I'm just going to ink it as well with some of this archival ink. I'm going to do this off camera though, because I want to concentrate and be careful so that I don't slip and end up um, going like that and causing myself um, a line in the middle of my playing card. That's that with the Sharpie marker. So that's got rid of the white border, um, the white edge. But I do want to create myself a little um, border as well. So I'm just going to add a touch of black archival ink just to frame it as well. 
Now I want to glue my girl down, something like that. I love the blue background that she was on um, before. Let me see. Can you see there? It's really tiny. Um, but I just think with the flowers behind, that looks um, super duper cute. So I'm going to stick her down um, with some um, three in one. You can see that I've fussy cut um, her out. So I'm just going to apply some glue all over this. Let me just bring back a piece of deli paper. In fact, I'll use glue stick uh, as well, which just um, makes it easier just to position things. And then we'll apply some fabric, some three in one as well. And again, I can spread this out to the edge just with my fingers like like this, just to make sure that that sticks really well. And I'm going to glue her down so that her hair is slightly off here. I don't like this little bit um, where her hair is brown. So I'm just going to cut um, that off this extra piece that's on the side here. You don't need don't need that. There we go. And then I'm just going to use my Sharpie marker just to get rid of the white again. So that's that. I love how that looks. And I'm toying with the idea as well as to whether to outline her with a little bit of white just in scribbly lines like, like this, just to make her stand out on that blue background just a, a little bit more. So I'm just going to go around her just like this, really loose and scribbly. I'm just going to dot as well, just above her eyelashes like that, just to make her more whim whimsical. I love how that looks. Oh, that's cool. Woo! It's the daisy. Don't. Tell me I've My it. puzzle pieces have been drying overnight so that the dimensional glue um, could set and also these little um, micro beads here. And that's how that one looks. I just love it. I just think that's gorgeous. That's what it's like on the back. And I didn't want to waste the piece of wire that I showed you yesterday as an example. So I just cut it slightly smaller and made another spiral on the other end. I've put some slightly smaller beads onto the playing card um, just because the larger beads here would have just been too overpowering for the size of this one here and I couldn't resist adding um, a little charm to this one here either so I've just added this um, pewter flower I just think that looks so cute and of course I've kept the playing card back on the back so that it's obvious that this is an altered playing card what I like about using napkins is the fact that you can still see the, um, the playing card details underneath as well I'm really happy with that I also added some um, dimensional glue to the crown of the lady as well so that's what these two look like now i've got a whole playlist full of altered puzzle pieces which i'll leave the link to in the description box below all you need to do is click on the play playlist and then you can pick the videos then that are um, maybe of particular interest to you um, i've done altered jenga pieces so there's a video showing you how to make these of course there's the video showing how i made this altered jigsaw puzzle piece um, i also made a postcard um, a while ago as well. Um, this has got a crossword or word search background, I think it is. And then I've used mini playing cards here, um, the puzzle quote um, and Alice in Wonderland, which I think lends itself really well to a puzzle type theme. I've also got some ideas as well for the Scrabble tile, the Jenga piece, um, and the domino piece, which I'll share with you um, hopefully sometime next week as well, because I've come up with a really good idea for altering those. But don't forget that, you know, if you've got some of the Tim Holtz ephemera packs with bingo cards and that kind of thing, um, do a collage if you if you want to. You know, as long as it's um, the puzzled theme, you can interpret it in any way you like. Now, of course, don't forget to go and check out and see what Kylie has been up to for the puzzle challenge this week. And again, I'll leave um, the link to Kylie's video in the description box so, below. just to recap, the something small challenge for this week is altered puzzle pieces um, hopefully I've given you lots of options as to how you can interpret it um, and as always if you've enjoyed my project today I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments below if anybody is new to my channel and you want to follow along with this prompt I'll leave
leave the link to the Mixed Media Emporium in the description box below. Please be aware that the group is prompt related. Um, so, you know, we do delete anything that um, doesn't fit in with our prompts and, and challenges. Um, and there is a, a question that you need to answer to gain access to the group. But thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.